What's good everybody, Inada here back with another Shinobi Striker video. This video is just one of a series named Inada's Ninja Academy. This series is meant to help new players and experienced players alike. And with that said, let's jump straight into it. All right, let's kick this series off with the first thing that every new player runs into, VR missions. VR missions in short are missions that you perform in order to learn the very basics of Shinobi Striker. It's hard for me to say this because I play the game a lot and love when new players arrive, but if you're looking to enjoy this game for the sake of PvE, this is definitely not the game for you. This game is mostly centered around PvP. PvE doesn't give you much. Moving on, a lot of new players wonder if VR missions are something that's worth doing. Well, my answer is a little weird and that answer is yes and no. Huh? Because my answer is yes and no, instead of you deciding to do it based on my answer, I instead want you to listen to the information regarding VR missions and come to your own conclusion of whether or not it's something that you think is worth doing. VR missions give very little experience, so if you're looking to level your character or your mentor up, PvP is the way to go. Just to put this out there, your level doesn't mean anything in Shinobi Striker. It's just a way of showing how often you play the game. However, VR missions are the only way to unlock VR masters such as Rock Lee, Gara, Mitsuki, Shikamaru, Deidara, Kabuto, Konan, Kisame, and Hinata. So, in order to unlock every mentor, you will have to do at least some of the VR missions. Okay, let's start with the basics. VR missions can also give you unique cosmetic items that you can't get anywhere else in the form of Kakashi Scrolls. Kakashi Scrolls differ from other scrolls because they will always give you a specific item. You can see which item you'll get from a Kakashi Scroll in a mission if you look at the menu to the right and look under Scroll Reward. Shinobi Striker is also full of RNG. There's no exact way to make sure you get the item. You just have to keep doing the mission over and over again and hope that RNG Jesus blesses you with the item. Another thing that VR missions can do that you can't get anywhere else is help you get promoted to a Chunin and later a Jonin. Now here's the part where I say yes that VR missions are worth doing. As you get promoted, you can access more items in 1010 Scroll Shop. If you're a ranged type, a lot of players consider Sasuke's Kusanagi sword to be the best weapon for ranged types. So if you want that sword, you need to at least become a Chunin. Every other weapon is just recolors except for the Hidden Cloud Short Sword, which in my opinion aren't that bad. The only reason I can see why someone would want to become a Jonin is if you're a defense type that wants to use Samehada, you want the Jonin only clothes, which include the Lee Village's standard Anbu uniform, or you just want to become the highest rank that you can attain in the game. If you want to rise through the ranks, just complete every VR mission available to you. Once you've done that, go back into the lobby and if you see an exclamation mark anywhere, it's a character that wants to speak with you. Go to that character and they'll assign you a mission to complete. If you haven't taken the mission, the exclamation mark shows as red. If you've taken the mission already, it shows as yellow. And if you've completed the mission, it shows as blue. Once you've completed the mission, return to that character and turn the mission in. Once you do, they'll tell you the next mission you have to do to be able to accept the mission from another character. Repeat this process over and over again with the different characters scattered around the lobby until you become a Chunin. To become a Jonin, there is one mission that's going to be difficult for you to complete, but luckily I already made a video on that mission. So if you're having trouble with Perfect Susanoo Showdown, make sure to check that video out. I'll leave the link to it in the description. And that's all for today's episode of Inada's Ninja Academy. I know these videos are a bit short, but that's only because there's only so much information I can pack in one video. If you think I missed any information on this topic, let me know in the comments below. Maybe your comment will help out someone who's also aspiring to become a shinobi. While you're at it, if you're enjoying this series so far and would like to see more, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out some of my other videos on your screen right now to hold you over until my next video. Thanks for watching, my name is Inada, and we out here making major moves.